AJ? Hi, Eric. What's up, AJ? Uh, there's been a lot of uh, talk about kind of a collective effort for teams to kind of make sure that the season goes ahead. I'm wondering, like, as one of the veteran guys in, in the group, like, what's kind of the message that you have to convey to, like, how we can make this work going forward? Um, that it's just going to take everybody. It's going to take, um, you know, everybody to, uh, to do their part. You know, obviously, we, we consider ourselves a close group, uh, you know, kind of like a family. And we understand and we respect that, uh, you know, each and everybody want to, you know, get through this season safely and, and go back and see our families after and not have any issues. So uh, the only way for us to do that is everybody do their part and, you know, continuing to, uh, you know, stay on top of, uh, you know, washing the hands and sanitizing just after doing stuff. And, uh, you know, especially at home, uh, you know, just kind of staying inside and, um, you know, respecting this time during the season, to, to, you know, trying to everybody keep, uh, keep everybody safe and possible. And I guess just to follow up, there have been some some issues maybe around baseball, but a lot of Padres have kind of said that things have gone mostly smoothly. Has that been your experience so far in the week that since summer camp started? Yeah, it's been really smooth over here. And, um, you know, as soon as everything shut down and in spring training, I came over here and, um, you know, the stadium out here opened up, uh, you know, a couple weeks after that. And um, they've been doing a really good job here at Petco on um, just keeping everything really clean. You know, every time uh, – we touch a dumbbell in the weight room. Someone's there to, to wipe it down right after. So it's been really good here. And, uh, you know, like I said, fortunately for me, um, it's been extremely easy to, to follow all these conditions and protocols because uh, I've been here at PECO the whole time um, trying to get my work in uh, during the pandemic. Uh, two questions. First of all, you've always been a really good starter. First month, you tear it up. I'm just curious. Do you do anything differently, do you think, than other guys to sort of be ready right when that bell rings? And is that anything that you've been able to share with other guys, considering how important the start is going to be for the team? And the other question I was curious about is, since it's a more compact season, um, do you, are, you, are you changing your approach in terms of your training in season or whatever to get through 162, that whole, you know, it's a marathon thing. This is more of a sprint. Are you planning on doing anything differently? Um, yeah, it's definitely a different situation. I know a lot of guys in the offseason like to go home and start at different times and um, you know, some guys ramp it up right there to, uh, right after Thanksgiving, certain guys around Christmas or the new year, uh, especially baseball wise. I think a lot of guys stay in shape with the weights and all that. And the baseball stuff turns up a little bit. Um, this year was a little bit different, obviously, uh, you know, because of the, the reasons outside of baseball. And um, I think a lot of guys have, uh, have just learned the process throughout this whole entire thing. You know, us, the guys that are working out here at Petco, we, um, you know, try to maintain a similar program to, to an off season the first couple months or the first month at least. And then from that point on, you want to kind of simulate uh, more of a, of a regular day and like a regular season type thing. So, um, you know, we, we turned up the running, the, the conditioning, the, the, the weights. And, and then at, after got to face some of the guys here that uh, the pitching, uh, you know, like Craig Stammen and um, Pierce Johnson and a lot of those guys that stuck around. So, um, you know, after that first month that everything was shut down, it, it seemed, uh, you know, like a pretty normal routine as far as coming to the field, getting your work in, and being able to face live pitching after. Yes, uh, I was wondering, I'll, Bob's question, repeat that about the quick starts for you. What do you attribute that to, and what do you expect of yourself in this 60-game season? Yeah, you always try and get out of the gates and, and start good, and um, you know, I think that's, that's a credit to your off season. You know, you, you try and spend a lot of time in the off season and spring training, preparing, making the adjustments that you need to make for the following season. And, um, you know, it just seems like this year you, we've had a lot more time to work on those adjustments, had a lot more time to, you know, get everything right with your body, get everything right with your swing and all that stuff. So, um, you know, I think that's the beauty of it too, uh, being 60 games, um, nobody really knows. Stats wise, number wise, what's good, what's not good. So it just emphasizes winning that much more. And, um, you know, personally, number wise, um, you know, I haven't really sat down and kind of broke down. Uh, is this amount of RBIs? Does that translate to 162 game season? It's just emphasizes winning that much more. I wonder what from the intra squad games, I mean, you guys have done crowd noise, music, uh, all that. What have you gathered about what it's going to be like to play this season from those? Um, there's just a lot of adjustments. I think that's uh, what the inner squads help with so much. Um, you know, there's times uh, in the infield when we're communicating, uh, when I'm, you know, Profar is trying to tell me a pitch that's coming or something like that. 
you know, usually you whistle or do something uh, along those lines. And now with, with there being no crowd, you know, we had to make a little adjustment there because the hitter can hear you and you don't want to tip the pitch. So um, they've been extremely beneficial because, you know, we've been able to kind of learn that stuff on the fly during the inner squads and not have to learn that from, you know, game one to 15. Okay, Marty Caswell, 1360. Marty, you're still on mute. Dan, one day I'll figure this out. Hi, Eric. Right. <laughs> um, as the Padres first baseman, you will probably come in closer contact with players from other teams more than anybody else except except your catcher. Do you have to go and prepare to play your position uh, any any differently, and what precautions are you going to take? And would you consider wearing wearing a mask? Um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm uh, definitely going to have to make adjustments on that end. I know there's a, a couple different rules on – um, you know, being socially distant from the runner, especially while the play is not happening. So that'll be some stuff that, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll have to adjust to and kind of learn when that goes down. Um, and I'm sorry, what, what was your second question again, Marty? Uh, and would you, would you also consider wearing, would you consider wearing a mask? I mean, I know Tatis has done that um, during, some, during some practices, but is that something that you, that you would consider and feel comfortable in? Yeah, that's something I definitely consider. And, um, you know, maybe one of these inner squads would be a good time to try it out. Uh, you know, whether it be uh, even just using it on defense and, um, you know, just using it at some point during the game. So um, whatever, whatever we can do to make it as safe as possible and to make others as safe as possible on the field, um, you know, I know everyone's certainly going to make an effort to do that. And last thing, how, how much thought did you put into whether or not to go ahead and, and, play, and play this season, whether it's consulting with family members and also your, your baseball colleagues, um, you know, across these different teams? Um, honestly, not, not much thought at all. I mean, um, you know, I, I certainly want to keep everybody safe, especially in my family and all that stuff. But, um, you know, I trust my guys. I trust the guys here in, with the Padres. I trust that, um, you know, all the guys, the players, staff, and everybody are, are doing whatever they can truly to, to have a season and, and to play this game. And, um, you know, and I can speak on the Padres behalf and all of our players and stuff that you can really notice and see everyone doing their part to keep it clean. And, um, you know, I just hope that everybody else in the league does the same. But, um, yeah, baseball is, you know, obviously uh, what everybody loves to do. And uh, we're going to do it, uh, you know, if, if it's safe, we, we want to do it as much as possible. Thanks. Next question, and we'll go to Jake. Hey, Eric, I hope everything's going well. Um, you obviously made it up through the system in Kansas City pretty quick. I I'm just curious your thoughts on – do you feel, given the how unprecedented these rosters being built are, give the young players on your team a pretty unique opportunity to maybe make a roster well before they were going to um, with the 60-game season kind of being a sprint? Absolutely. Um, you know, I know a lot of guys, especially on the, on the young guys, the prospects are, are certainly making a name for themselves. And, um, you know, really, I think it's, it's such a cool uh, and unique situation for those guys. I mean, we had our first round pick, um, you know, get drafted a week ago and a week later, he's, you know, playing left field in the big league inner squad game. So from a development standpoint, it just, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for these guys, even just to be around all of us. And, you know, these guys get to watch uh, Tatis hit batting practice and Manny take ground balls at third. So just being able for those guys to have eyes on these guys on a day to day basis, see the work ethic see how Manny plays 160 games every year by what he's doing in the training room and what he's doing in the weight room is extremely beneficial for those guys. And all those guys have been great. Those guys work, they work their tail off and they're asking the older guys the right questions and they, they truly want to get better. And then when the game comes, you can see the competitiveness in them and these guys want to come at you and, and they want to prove themselves. So it makes for a competitive camp and uh, it makes it really fun.